Hey there, it's Clay with modernlove.life. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about five ways that you are ruining your chances of saving your relationship. People are really concerned that they are gonna mess things up or that their situation is hopeless or something like that. And so I did want to address some legitimately um, not so great things. Um, and you know, this, this goes a lot deeper than like, you know, oh yeah, don't beg and plead all the time and all that stuff. I mean, you know, you guys don't need me to tell you that. You, you, you've, you've probably been through all that on day one. I, I know I was on, on that place, in that place on day one of my breakups in the past. And so I, I, I remember what it's like. I know uh, that a lot of folks out there have been there as well too. First of all, don't feel bad. We've all been there. We've all done that. Except for occasionally I do talk to someone who's like, yeah, I didn't do that. And it's like, wow. I can't believe that. That's amazing. Um, how did how did how did you do that? <laughs> but um, um, most of us have been through that sort of phase. Anyway, we're not talking about that. Though we're talking about uh, real things that are ruining your chances. The first one is that you try too much to manage anxiety. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so we're we're gonna have anxiety in this whole process. You know, it's like, oh my goodness, I'm going to meet up with my ex for the first time. We're gonna go get coffee together or something. You're gonna probably feel a little bit anxious about that. That's normal, that's natural. What happens is people then start to try to manage their anxiety in you know that situation or any other situation. And there's really two ways that people try to manage their anxiety. Number one is by posturing, you know, puffing themselves up, trying to make it seem like I'm, I'm cool. I've got it all under control. I, I, I don't, I don't care. I'm, it's, just, it's just coffee. If you show up cool, whatever, I'm totally down for whatever. It's, it's, it's okay. That's cool. If you actually legitimately feel that way, like if you actually legitimately feel anything, I want you to feel free and comfortable to, to express that and to be that way. But if you're just kind of, you know, plastering on this indifferent face or this happy face or this tough guy or tough girl face or whatever, then it's inauthentic. And it's going to actually be more like this suit of armor that actually um, um, protects you in a certain way from getting hurt, but it's also gonna stop you and your partner from actually being able to uh, connect authentically and genuinely in a in a one-on-one -on -one sort of capacity. You know, using this example of going and meeting up for coffee, you're you're not gonna be as present in that interaction. You're not gonna be as conversational in that interaction. You're not gonna be as curious in that interaction. You're not gonna be as um, emotionally available in that interaction. And instead, you know, you might be able to get through the interaction okay without, you know, looking foolish or something, but are you gonna feel connected to one another on the other side? If you're not gonna feel connected, why would they wanna to get together with you for another coffee date or you know dinner date or meetup date or whatever? Why would they wanna interact with you again? You have to actually show them that you feel something. You actually have to you know connect with them if they wanna experience you again. Uh, so that's posturing. The flip side of that is collapsing which is where, you know, maybe you allow your emotions to kind of sweep you up and overtake you and sort of, you know, dominate you in some capacity, whether that's, you know, feelings of anxiety about like, oh my goodness, what if I lose it? What if I say something silly? What if I say something stupid? What if I do something over the top and it scares them away? And so what you do is you kind of look a little bit too much to them to kind of pace things and you're just sort of like giving up everything that you have energetically uh, to kind of, you know, look for validation from them. Both of these are n not great ways of managing anxiety. You know, one of them is to cower at the anxiety. The other one is to um, sort of pretend it's not there and to puff yourself up. And what we really want to do is we want to say, okay, there's anxiety here. Rather than trying to manage it in some way, what if we just got cool with the fact that we're feeling anxious? And if you do that, that's actually much more empowering. Because again, going back to our hypothetical example, let's say that you and your ex are going to meet up for coffee. It's been the first time in a while. And um, you know, you're, you're feeling a little bit nervous about that. Chances are they're feeling a little bit nervous about it too. And second of all, rather than going into this coffee meetup and you're just sort of like dancing around this, this nervousness, this anxiety thing, and both trying to pretend that it's not there, both trying to, you know, paper over it or something like that. What if you just said, hey, you know, honestly, I'm a little bit anxious to meet up with you, but I'm here. I thought I'd take a chance. I hope this goes really well. I hope, I hope we have a great time. How about you? 
And then once you actually start talking about it, now you're not trying to paper over it. You're not trying to hide from it. You're not trying to pretend it's not there or anything like that. It's just something that you're talking about because you're okay with feeling anxious. It might be an intense feeling, but you're okay experiencing that. And once you start to own it, then you can move forward in a much more powerful sort of way. The second thing that you, that you might be doing that could be ruining your chances is that you're focusing too much on external things. That is to say, you know, you're focusing too much on your partner's rebound relationship. You're focusing too much on, you know, what text message do you send? You're focusing too much on the words that they said when they were upset with you that one time and they said, we're never getting back together. Um, I know it's really, really common for people to focus on these sorts of things. And, you know, sure, these are material things that have happened, especially in the case of like a rebound relationship or something. Yeah, there's a new person in their life and it does present realistic challenges and it does present real things that need to be navigated around. But chances are there's probably deeper level issues than sending the right text message or dealing with a rebound relationship or you know that one time the two of you had a fight and they said that the two of you are never getting back together there's probably deeper emotional stuff like lack of trust lack of um you know being on the same team with one another lack of good communication lack of empathy lack of composure lack of being present with one another lack of all sorts of other things and if we just get caught up in this you know maelstrom of what do i text next okay that worked what do i text next oh no that didn't work what do i text next okay that worked a little bit okay what do i text next then you know you might just end up chasing your tail potentially forever because there are deeper level things that aren't being addressed such as hey do i trust myself to handle whatever's going to come up hey can i be present with someone else instead of constantly seeking validation hey, can I actually connect with them as a human being rather than someone who I perceive as, you know, holding the keys to my happiness? And when you start to focus on these deeper level things, you'll actually be able to connect with one another in a much better way. And, you know, really, that's probably what you're trying to do when you're thinking about what do I text next? What do I text next? What do I text next? And all of that. So we want to focus on important, deeper level stuff rather than just skimming across the surface of, oh my goodness, this happened. Oh my goodness, they said that. Oh my goodness, I saw this thing on Facebook or, or they started following attractive people on Instagram or something like that. Um, the third thing that we want to do or that we want to be aware of that could be ruining your chances is that you're not trusting yourself. Many times people will be concerned that maybe something isn't going to work for them, that you know, some strategy that we come up with on a coaching call or something isn't going to work for them. And it's like, you know, okay, cool. Um, hey, this is what I see in your situation. I think you might want to think about doing this or that or work on this thing or whatever. They, they might say, okay, that sounds all good and everything, but what if that doesn't work? Or what if I say this and then they say this other thing back to me and they, they shut me down or something like that? Or, or what, if, what, if, what if I'm just getting my hopes up? Or what if I feel silly as the result of all of this? because it doesn't go my way or whatever. And when you really boil all of it down, all of this, you know, uh, plan B, plan C, plan D sort of thinking, it's really just some form of, I don't trust myself. I don't trust myself to be able to handle whatever's going to come up. I don't trust myself to be able to deal with not getting things to unfold the way that I want them to. And you know, it's a, it's a, it's a realistic and legitimate concern that things might not go the way you want them to. Honestly, they might not, you know? You might have some sort of conversation and ask your, your partner to, hey, let's get back together, or hey, let's be on the same team, or hey, can we agree to this, or do you wanna do that you know, next week? And maybe they don't go the way that you want them to. But if you think about it, you know, think about how old you're, you are. You know, I happen to be dangerously close to 39 years old. At least me, for example, I have been able to handle everything that has happened for the past 38 years and 11 months in my life. Somehow I've been able to handle everything that's happened. And you have probably been able to handle everything that has happened in the duration of your life. Yeah, of course, things may not have gone the way that you wanted them to. Yeah, maybe, maybe things went really horribly wrong. But the truth is, you're here. You're listening to this. You're watching this. And that means that you have made it, at least this far. And the truth is, is that when it comes to things between you and your ex and you and your partner, um, you're probably going to be able to make it. Of course, things may not go the way that you want them to, but 
you're going to be able to make it. So you can at least trust that things are going to be okay in that capacity. Secondly, um, another layer deeper down is we want to say, okay, if we're not trusting ourselves to handle whatever's happening, what exactly is happening inside? And the truth is that there's, um, at least in this regard, uh, two sides of yourself. There's an inner child that is probably very scared that things aren't going to go the way that they want them to and that they think that things are going to be dangerous. And there's also the opportunity for an inner adult to be there. And what you want to do is you want to start acting as your own inner adult and parenting and taking care of your own inner child. And that might involve, you know, just reassuring yourself of like, hey, you know, little Clay, I know things can be a little bit scary right now. Um, I know we might not get what we want. That's, that's a realistic possibility. Um, but you know what? We're going to be able to handle this. Yeah, it might get scary. It might get intense. I might say something and then, you know, they might be upset with us or they might yell at us. But you know what? One way or another, we're going to handle this. And I'm going to take care of you as your, you know, inner parent through all of this. So let's handle this. And as you start to do this, you'll start to learn how to trust yourself more because what that, you know, on a deeper level, that's what's really going on is your inner child is not trusting your inner parent to actually take care of it and to actually, you know, reassure it that everything is going to be okay. So we want to actually start to build that inner relationship. Um, and, and that I think is going to allow you to trust yourself a lot more, which is going to decrease anxiety, which is going to um, allow you to trust your partner a lot more and allow for a lot of great other things to unfold from there. But it does start with trusting yourself. Um, the fourth thing that you might be doing that is ruining your chances is not hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Because of course, that is how I'm able to continue to make great videos like this and to reach more people is by wonderful, lovely people hitting that YouTube thumbs up button. So if you do like these videos, if you do like old Clay here uh, in your corner rooting for you, just go ahead and take a moment of your time hit the thumbs up button. It's totally free. It's a free way to support the channel. Uh, you know, also you can do whatever else you might do as well too. Leave one comment, leave two comments, leave three comments, um, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. But hey, it's something to think about. Hit that thumbs up button. Okay. Um, the seriously, the fourth thing that you might be doing uh, that could be ruining your chances is that you're listening too much to well-intentioned friends, family members, etc and doubting yourself. When you go through a breakup, you may find yourself having friends or family members who are like, you know what, oh, d d d don't, don't talk to your ex anymore. Breakups happen for a reason. Move on, find someone else. There's other fish in the sea. You know, if they, if they, if, it, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Just, just, just to let go. There's more people out there. And that's okay if that's what you really want. If you just want to move on and let go, awesome, do it. But if, you, if this relationship that you have is worth going to bat for for you, and that's obviously a choice you have to make yourself, then go to bat for it. Like, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people and they want to know like, hey, is there hope in my situation? Is it hopeless? Should I do this? Should I give up? And what I tell them to do, what I encourage them to do is to think about like, okay, let's just say it's hopefully a very long time from now and you're, you know, on your deathbed. As you look back on your life and you look back on maybe this particular situation, are you going to feel like you went for it all the way? Or are you going to feel like you held yourself back? That you didn't go all the way because you were too concerned about looking cool or not looking needy or uh, you were too concerned about what your friends or what your, your crazy cousin or something like that was going to think about you if you if you kept trying with, with this person that's important to you. And, you know, I think most people just want to know that they gave it a good, solid shot. And if it didn't work out, you know, I think most people would come to terms with that and they'd be able to say, okay, you know what, fine. My ex, uh, they just weren't open to, to getting back together for whatever reason. But hey, I gave it a great shot. I went after it all the way. And I can look back on this whole chapter feeling complete, knowing that I went for it all the way and that was just their choice. And I think that's really what most people want when they think about all this. And so are you setting yourself up to be in that place where, you know, um, at the end of your life, you can look back and say, yeah, I did it, I went for it. And maybe it worked out, maybe it didn't work out, but I went for it. Or are you playing small? Are you just, you know, wanting to not look silly, more concerned about what someone else is gonna say, more concerned about what someone else is gonna think of you? 
because one thing I can tell you after working with, you know, tons and tons of people is when, when you do get back together with your ex, all of those people that were so against it um, suddenly start, start to be very supportive of you <laughs> after you get back together. I can tell you that from actually getting back together with my ex in the past. And I can also tell you that from working with a lot of clients as well, too, is that suddenly there's a flip. And the truth is your friends and family just want to see you be happy. They don't want to see you get hurt. And um, if it seems like you being in contact with your ex is hurting you, yeah, they're going to tell you to stop it because they don't want to see you hurt. And on the other side of that, you know, if they see that being in contact with your ex is getting you closer together and it's making you happy and it's helping you move towards, um, you know, certain milestones that might be important for you or for your social circle or something, yeah, they're going to be supportive of it. But the most important thing is for you to be able to live with yourself. Are you comfortable moving forward with your life um, and feeling complete with all of this, knowing that you gave it your all? If you are, cool. If not, and this is an important relationship for you, I'd really strongly suggest, you know, really going for it. Um, and, you know, that brings to, to point our, our final uh, uh, thing that may be ruining your chances, and that is looking to your ex as if they hold all of the power over you, okay? You know, so many times people look to their ex and they say, you know, oh my goodness, I'm so nervous about meeting up with you or something like that. I'm worried that you're going to judge me. I'm worried that uh, you're not going to be attracted to me anymore. I'm worried that um, we're going to have some fight. I'm worried that you're going to tell me that you feel nothing for me or whatever. And they, they forget that their ex, you know, isn't this perfect person. They're not this you know, judge up there ready to slam down the gavel on you and, you know, convict you to a lifetime of being rejected or something like that. They're just a person trying to figure out their own life, just like you are. They're just someone trying to do the right thing, just like you are. They're just someone who's just trying to, you know, there's someone who's just as confused, just as anxious, just as scared as you are. There's someone who is confused and has torn feelings and maybe they remember the bad times. Maybe they remember the good times. Maybe they're prideful and they're afraid to say that they were wrong. Or maybe they're scared and they're afraid to say, yeah, I'm willing to go for this relationship because it's important to me. They're not these perfect people. They might be very attractive, but, they might, but they're not these perfect people. And so it's important to remind yourself that because it's going to help you to connect with them a lot better. And it's going to help you to pull your focus back on what needs to be on in the first place, which is, you know, taking care of some of these deeper level stuff rather than, you know, trying to analyze them and be like, oh my goodness, are they going to judge me poorly? Are they going to judge me positively? Are they going to be favorable towards this? Are they going to be unfavorable towards this? Because, you know, the chances are they're probably thinking the same thing. Like, oh my goodness, like we're going to, we're going to meet up. We're, we're talking suddenly. Um, did, did I just sound stupid? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Maybe we still have some weird issues that we need to resolve from that fight that we had or something. But I hope this goes well. And if you can remind yourself that, you're not going to ruin your chances, okay? Um, if you do want additional help with all of this, we, of course, do have our course called Effortless Connection. Uh, you can go ahead and check that out over, over at modernlove.life slash EC. That's modernlove.life, not .com, uh, slash E as in effortless and C as in connection. You see, see what I did there? So it's uh, modernlove.life slash EC. Anyway, I uh, hope this helps you out. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you're having a great day. Once again, please help me out. Hit that thumbs up button. Please take care. I'll talk to you next time.